Question 63, leak code, unique paths 2. So you're given an m by n integer array grid. There is a robot initially located at the top left corner. The robot tries to move to the bottom right corner. The robot can only move either down or right at any point in time. An obstacle and space are marked as 1 or 0 respectively in the grid. A path that the robot takes cannot include any square that is an obstacle. Return the number of possible unique paths that the robot can take to reach the bottom right corner. The test cases are generated so that the answer will be less than or equal to 2 times 10 to the power of 9. So this question is just an adaptation of unique paths 1, but in this question we have an obstacle which we need to take into consideration. So in this first example we have an output of 2 where the first path is all the way across to the right and all the way down and the second possible solution is down and then right. All other paths include this obstacle here and as it stated in the question if any path includes the obstacle do not include it in your output. So let's dive into the solution to this question. So with this question, just like unique pass one, we're going to be utilizing dynamic programming. And what dynamic programming does is it builds upon subproblems. So it has overlapping subproblems in the question. We need to find all possible unique paths, and that should be a good indicator that we will be using dynamic programming. So right here we have the grid array, we have the start, the finish, and an obstacle here, and then this is going to be the DP array. And what we'll do is we'll initialize every single value within this DP array to zero. Okay, so this is the starting point. So what do we need with dynamic programming? We need some base cases. In order to start populating this DP array, we're going to need some kind of base to work with. And with unique paths and unique paths two, it includes the first rows and the first columns. So what we need to do is we need to loop through the first column and we need to decide whether there are any obstacles in there, and we can populate this DP array with that value. So, so we know that we can reach this value because there's no obstacle there. We know we can reach this value and this value. So there's one way to get to each of the columns in the initial row, and then let's and then let's loop through the rows in the grid to see whether there is an obstacle. We have an obstacle here, right? So this value stays at zero, and then we break from this loop. So we do not check this initial row value here. We just keep that at zero, which we initialized the DP array to. So now we have carried out the section outside of this and we have created that base to work with. So we have created the solutions to previous subproblems. And what we're going to do with DP or dynamic programming is we're going to use the solutions to those problems to work out the rest of the values. So how many possible ways are there to get to this value? Well, there's one from here, and there's zero from here because that's an obstacle. So we can just add those together. So one plus zero is equal to one. How many ways are there to get to this value here? Well, we have one from above, which we calculated previously, and we have one from the left, which we just calculated. So that is going to be equal to two. How many ways can we get to this value down here? Well, we only have one from above because we didn't check the value on the left because there was an obstacle up here. So we can add that into there. And then finally, so the value for this last one is going to be the summation of the potential solutions or the potential paths to the cell above and to the cell at the left. So that is going to be equal to three. And then we can just return this value. So time complexity for this solution is going to be O M times N, where M is the number of rows and N is the number of columns. And then space complexity is also going to be O M times M because we are utilizing the DP grid array here. So let's code this out. So let's get the obstacle grid dot length. Let's get the obstacle grid zero dot length. So the columns. And then let's create this DP array. And we're going to initialize this array with zeros. So like we said in the solution, let's loop through the rows and let's check to see if the value within the cell so obstacle grid at i zero so we're looping through the rows here is equal to one so if it's equal to an obstacle let's set dp at i zero equal to zero so because there is an obstacle within the grid we're going to set the value at dp to zero because there is no potential way to get to this and this is a really important part because if we don't break here, we're going to loop through to the next row and we're going to check that value. And if there's no obstacle in there, it's going to populate the cell with one. So we need to break out of this loop. And because we have initialized the DP array with zero up here, the next row within this 
is automatically going to be set to zero. Else, what we can do is we can set dp at i zero equal to one. So if there isn't an obstacle, there is a path, so we can add that into the dp array. And then we need to do the same for the columns. So remember, it's the columns, so we're going to be looping through and checking obstacle grid zero and changing the column value. So J in this case, and we're going to be setting DP at zero J equal to zero. Remember to break. Otherwise, we'll set DP at zero J to one because there is a potential path. So that is the base of this DP solution sorted. So we have filled the initial rows and the initial columns. Now we just need to populate the rest of the DP array grid. So we can loop through i starting at position one because we've already filled in the values at index zero. Loop through j as well. So if obstacle grid at i j is equal to one, so if it is an obstacle, we just set dp at i j equal to zero because there are no potential paths there. Else, we calculate the recurrence relation. So dp at ij is going to be equal to i minus one j, so the cell above, plus dp i j minus one, which is going to be the value to the left. And then we just need to return the last value within the dp array grid. Okay, let's give that a go. Okay, let's submit it. And there you have it.